my name is Michel Swart. I've been working for the Water Authority since 2014. I will take you through the structure of this presentation. Uh, after a short introduction, um, I will explain the business case for the tax collection process. Uh, we will have a look at the objectives, the success factors and the results, and results leading to a triple win situation. We'll end this presentation by looking at uh, how we continue innovating with WSO2. Um, this presentation was a co-production by uh, René Wiersma and me. Uh, René Wiersma is uh, an architect from Jenlo. He has a broad understanding of architecture, not only uh, ent uh, application integration, but all other things. And he has helped our company to uh, establish a found, profound uh, uh, platform for designing, uh, realizing and implementing um, services for integration. Uh, my role at uh, w, uh, HHNK is uh, the role of enterprise architect. Um, and in 2015, uh, I designed the first financial services which are now running on the system. Okay, we'd like to thank a couple of people, um, Robert, Evert and Arno from HHNK and Ruben, Tamara and Hans from uh, Jenlo. Let's have a look at uh, the water authorities first. What are water authorities? Where do they originate from? Uh, a long time ago, in the Middle Ages to be uh, precise, um, the Dutch started digging ground to make it useful for growing crops. And at that time, uh, loading grounds uh, went to the need to manage the water. Uh, we are, uh, 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 our country is for a, a big part below sea level. So that um, resulted in having uh, um, people work together to manage the water. And that's where the, the, the water authorities originated from. In 1916, there was a big flood which led to a more centralized coordination of the regional water authorities. And at the moment, um, there are 22 regional authorities in the Netherlands now who manage the water. <coughs> Let's have a look. There we go. What are our tasks? Well, our primary task is working on water safety by building dikes and dams. We also work on sufficient water, because too little water in the ground isn't good as well. We do it by building water storages, pumping, and all kinds of maintenance and inspection activities. We work on clean water as well, by uh, purifying sewage water before we uh, flow it out on the canals. And we work on road safety. It's a an old task which came uh, because uh, the regional roads were mostly uh, along dikes and dams. So uh, that was a task we, uh, we did. We are not trying to uh, outsource those tasks to com communities, but we still do it. And finally, we work together with other uh, authorities like police, fire department, army, to uh, in a crisis organizations. We regu regularly practice drills. Uh, and exercises in case a crisis occurs. Um, when we look at our uh, region we manage, this is the picture you can see uh, is from the Middle Ages, and this is our region now. So you can see by managing water, impoldering, we gain more, more land, and um, uh, that's what we have to manage. To compare the size, we have a picture of the London area, so uh, you can see how, how big it is approximately. It's about 500,000 acres of land. We, um, our um, clients and partners um, consist of 1.2 million citizens and uh, 30,000 companies who pay taxes. And we work together with about uh, 30 uh, communities. Our water control assets comprise of uh, uh, more than 1,000 miles of embankments and 18,000 18, miles of canals and ditches. And we use about 
3,500 uh, structural assets, and you can think of uh, structural assets as pumps, mills, sewage purification installations, etc. To do our jobs, uh, we uh, collect taxes, and we collect approximately 200 million of taxes a year. And beside the taxes, we uh, have sub uh, supplementary income by national and European grants to, um, and f federal contributions for um, uh, big water protection programs. And as an example, you can see here uh, what a big, uh, a large water protection program is. We created about um, three miles of uh, beach, dunes and embankments before uh, in the water to protect us from, uh, from water. Let's have a look at the business case. What could be improved? When we uh, look at our former tax process, we could say it was a manual, uh, a partial manual process with a lot of paperwork, physical paperwork, which was stored in cases. And um, after re-engineering our process, we went to a digital process, demand-driven, um, in a digital front office. We had three objectives to do. <clears throat> the first objective was to create transparency for our residents and companies. The second one was cr create uh, uh, usability as well. We had a website, but that wasn't uh, as user-friendly as it is now. And, of course, uh, within our company, we try to increase efficiency in our processes. How did we do it? What were the success factors? First, we could lend, uh, we could bend on a, a, a well-formulated IT vision, especially from the federal government. I will explain it later. And we used strict IT integration principles, on which I will uh, explain also. We have been working Scrum in our uh, te uh, integration team, uh, using sprints from, uh, for uh, about three weeks, delivering service integration between applications. And of course, by using a digital front office, we are working web-oriented. Well, uh, let's have a look at uh, the federal policy. In 2013, the federal government issued uh, a policy that all services uh, provided by the Dutch government should be uh, delivered electronically uh, by all government agencies. Um, since then, we have been working hard to deliver our services through our digital front office. And you can see at the same time that our organization is trying to find, um, to, to formulate a vision on how to provide services to our customers, uh, a regional uh, vision. So that might be different than other water authorities. You can see that's going parallel. So we are doing IT integration and automation and formulating our vision. Maybe a strange uh, 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 priority, but that's the way it goes. Um, when we look at, uh, at it from the uh, architecture perspective, we um, focus on having a service-oriented architecture. The application landscape we came from consisted of very much applications. There were about 400, and there are about 150 now, so we rationalized our landscape. Uh, there was very little uh, integration. Um, mostly, we saw people extracting data from an application, taking it to another application and uploading it sometimes producing errors in between. And in cases when there was integration, it was mostly point-to-point, -point, and we suffered a lot of vendor lock-in. So by striving to a service-oriented architecture and loosely coupled applications, uh, we are now far more flexible than uh, in the past. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I'm going back. Uh, the IT integration principles we use are straight through processing wherever possible. We have some legacy applications, of, of, for example, financial system, which, which isn't possible to 
uh, to work transaction-wise. It can only uh, work with batches, so in those cases we have to make uh, some um, weavers at this place. Uh, we strictly try to implement separation of concerns when developing services. You can see later on we have services in the tax area and we have services in the documentation area and we strictly separate them uh, for having the responsibilities in place. Uh, of course, when using a SOA, uh, when striving to a SOA architecture, we look at decoupling and reusability of services and we use a canonical data model. Um, the latter one is one to be considered well because it's a very pricey uh, integration principle um, and in some areas where there won't be uh, a lot of change of applications you might consider doing not so, uh, but so far we use a canonical data model when we look at the service implementation for the text process uh, the following uh, in, uh, architecture was implemented on the left side we see our residents and our companies logging into our digital office to um, use our tax services. The tax services are provided by our back office applications. Those are specialized applications for uh, taking in communications, for uh, archiving and for uh, giving services from the tax processes. And in the middle, we build our business application services by using the WSO2 ESB. So you can here see we have a resident service for collecting information about residents and we have services for uh, running our tax processes in the background. Integration, of course, uh, uh, happens by means of service integration. Um, and that's the, the, the picture we implemented. Let's have a look at the results. We had three wins for our residents, for our employees, and for our company. And when we look at the wins for our residents, we created usability. And I would like to point out that we created uh, a lot of usability by using a digital text form with tiles on it. And when you press a tile, for example, for paying your taxes, you immediately were linked through our uh, digital front office where you uh, could pay your tax immediately. immediately. Um, this is uh, an example which is being taken over by a lot of uh, other governmental organizations. Uh, my colleague Robert is giving a lot of presentations on this, uh, this item now. It doesn't look, uh, it's not very innovative, but it is in the Dutch government very innovative and it leads to a totally different uh, payment um, behavior by our customers. The th second thing was the transparency for our residents. Um, but we created transparency by giving an online statement of account. You can see here on the screen, not readable, but uh, for every year the due amount of taxes. And there was, is a button, a button next to every due amount for paying the taxes immediately. The nice side effect is that when there were due amounts in the past, for example, 50 cents, which we wouldn't collect anymore, the residents started paying those small amounts because they wanted to have all amounts green. Nice side effect. The wins for our company, our organization, were winning an award for 100% digital availability of services in our front office and 100% digital maturity. And winning the award was really a boost for our um, our workers, our employees, to, to go on on this way and to keep uh, improving processes, digitizing processes, etc. And finally, the wins for our organization were having 25% 25, 25 less telephone call, phone calls for being transparent and delivering services immediately, leading to a 40,000 euros a year of savings, a cut of internal resources by 11% and a savings of 350,000 euros on hiring a year, a reduction of banking costs by having more direct online transfers and a 50% fast, faster process for handling uh, remissions on taxes. 
our data arrays uh, in quality by working 100% digital, so that led to a raise in, qu in quality of service as well, giving the right information. And it led to a total cost reduction of 400,000 to 600,000 euros a year. And when we summarize it in the financial summary, putting the total investments on top, we can see we have a payoff time for this business case of 1.1 year, which is really something to be proud of. Okay, how will we continue innovating with WSO2? On the first place, we, our integration team will keep on working and plugging in more applications onto our service bus. bus. Um, we will reuse existing services, but also create new services in other business domains. At the moment, we don't use the API manager, but, but we will be using it uh, in case we are exposing data outside. We are not doing so yet, uh, except via the front office. Um, when we are going to expose data, it's in alignment with the federal uh, open data initiative. initiative. And we will have uh, uh, an improvement of security. We have security from outside in place, but we want to put uh, specific security on services internally as well. We are looking out, uh, f we are examining how to do it. When we look at the ESB infrastructure we use, we can, you can see that we use two products of WSO2. We use the enterprise service bus and we use the data services in combination with Microsoft IIS. The latter one is to be a candidate for replacement by the API manager. With this slide, I uh, come to the end of this presentation. Um, so there's now some time for questions and answers, I think. Um, shoot, I'd say. There was mm, no internal struggle, but you, uh, as, as I explained before, our, water, our organization is a water company. There, there are no IT people. So we really had to explain what a service bus is and what, it will, uh, what will be the benefit for using the service bus. And uh, it, it's really missionary work to keep on telling what it is, what it, what it will deliver, that it uh, brings flexibility in future. Uh, instead of being uh, uh, dependent on vendors. And uh, um, when getting those words between the ears, it went really well implementing services. And th the organization is really enthusiastic when we look at the tax process, what the things we deliver, because the work people do isn't the, 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 the work of delivering papers into a case. It's, uh, it's more uh, skilled work that uh, remains now. So we automated the, 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 the simple task, you, you could say. Is that a good answer for your question? Yes. Okay. I'm instantly again at the second question. 22 water authorities, do they, do they all have the same way of working? No. Or is there something like a shared service center that you can imagine with WSO2 products? We have, some, we have some shared services, we have some shared application development with the water authorities uh, at a central level, uh, but no uh, uh, working together on uh, ESB. We share information, of course, but every organization has its own integration issues, and uh, so that's how it works. I saw a finger in the back. Hello, you mentioned that the canonical data model is quite pricey. Um, what are the main cost drivers? The main cost drivers is uh, building um, two translations. When we, we translate from uh, a um, consuming application to a canonical data model, and the providing application, uh, uh, in, in that place, there has to be a translation from the canonical data model to the providing applications. The, the benefit is that it's um, much easier to replace applications, uh, but the, the investment is making two translations instead of one. 
So it will only be beneficial when you have an area where application replacement might be um, more freq frequent. Yes? Hi. Um, what tools do you use to test your services? Um, well, I'm going to pass that question to René. We use, uh, I know we use SOAP UI, but we also do some uh, automatic testing. Maybe René knows how we do that? Um, well, I'm afraid I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll have to look that up. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, please, please uh, visit our booth and we will explain to you. Is there any time for questions? Yes? Other questions? Yes? Hi there. Um, just a quick question. So you've replaced the previous process, I'm guessing, with this new digital process. Mm -hmm. Were you able to transition all of your customers immediately to the new process, or do you have to keep some of the old processors active for certain parts of your customer base? Yes, uh, we did it in parts. Uh, we separate our uh, customers by citizens and companies. Mm -hmm. And we did uh, the first, uh, first we did the citizens. Um, sit in for, citizen, for citizens, federal uh, authentication and identification is in place. Right. Uh, and for the companies, uh, the government is still working on. There, is some, uh, there are some uh, services which my colleague is uh, trying to improve uh, together with the federal government. Right. So we will probably be working on the company. We are working on the companies now this year, and we will probably get it live in the first quarter of next year. Okay, thank you. Thanks. More questions? Okay. Uh, in that case, I will uh, thank you for your uh, interest, for having uh, a look at our presentation, and uh, enjoy uh, the, the rest of the, the conference. <laughs>